What's up guys, this is Sammy Geek back here with another video and today I'm going to spend some time talking about Rivian. I need to get some things, I think some facts clear. I've been surfing the forums recently and uh, watching Rivian stories and hearing what these guys are saying and I want to start off by saying I really appreciate what these uh, guys are doing on Rivian stories and I am a super fan of Rivian. Of course I have a Tesla hat on today but that's because I'm a Tesla driver but I support the, we'll call it the mission of uh, you know, sustainability, and I support all EVs and manufacturers, especially Rivian. So I, I'm a pre-order holder myself. I've been following Rivian for some time, and I'm a super fanboy of Rivian. I, I want to see this company succeed more than anybody else. I want to get that on the table. I, I, I don't want this video to come across like I'm uh, ripping anybody or that I'm uh, disrespecting the guys that have worked uh, through blood, sweat, and tears to put together Rivian stories. But there's some, I feel like there's a few things that are your average Rivian pre-holder is being uh, shielded from. The first thing is, what is gonna happen with Rivian now? So you guys, I'm not gonna go through the whole story because everybody knows Rivian raised the, they had two years or more worth of pre-order holders for the R1T. So there's a big demand for the truck. That's the fact, that's the fact that we know. And uh, what we do know is that th there was interest at a certain price point, right? So then Rivian comes out and says, hey, sorry guys, we gotta increase the pricing due to supply uh, issues and the, you know costs to produce the vehicle and so forth. So in order for them to really pr be genuinely profitable on all these pre-orders, years of pre-orders, they had to raise the price, like not just 5%, but like 15, 20% on their vehicles, okay? So what happened? Let's, this is a fact, what happened? There was a outrage from the community that had pre-ordered uh, with some sort of misconception that uh, whatever you per or whatever you locked in at was gonna be the price of the vehicle. Well, perhaps there was gonna be increases in, in, uh, in the cost of supplies and things like this. But anyway, so this happens and everybody freaks out. So uh, what, why are people freaking out? Why are people canceling their pre-orders? Well, the biggest reason, if you look at the forums and the discussion, is people, they were outpriced. They simply put like, I am outpriced right now from being able to buy a Rivian. Maybe my budget was already stretched, but I loved the value proposition that Rivian was bringing. So I was gonna make it happen at this X, at X price point. Once, that, once they exceeded that price point, it priced out a lot of people. Yes, people were upset with the company, but it was a price thing. People canceled their pre-orders, right? So that that that's becomes an issue. So all of a sudden, overnight, like half the people are canceling their pre-orders. A couple days later, RJ comes out and says, hey, no, sorry. We're gonna go ahead and honor that pricing. Why is that? I'm, that's probably for another video, but because they didn't wanna lose their two plus years of pre-orders, right? Their most loyal clients. So then all the pre-order customers are going and saying, Oh great, this is awesome. I'm gonna get a truck that's gonna have 20% residual value right out of the gate. But here's where we're gonna to get to the meat and potatoes of this. This is why I think this is an issue for Rivian because look, your pre-order customers that had, you know, it was a two year plus wait, was at a certain price point. Once, look at the fallout that happened once that pricing changed, okay? So that's great. Now the pricing has been readjusted and so we still have two plus years of pre-order customers that looks fantastic, right? But that's probably at a loss for every single vehicle that is being sold to a pre-order customer. So the two year demand, the two years worth of customers that they're building vehicles for is gonna be at a loss, okay? That's, maybe that's okay because that probably happened with Tesla as well, but what about the pre-order customers from 3.1? So we're gonna say from 3.1 forward that there's gonna be profit built into the vehicles, right? They also, they came out with a couple different configurations, one to make it less expensive with the dual motor option. And then of course, the fully loaded option, which is now a $100,000 truck. My question is, what do the pre-orders look like from 3.1 forward? Because listen, we're gonna be able to tell what's gonna happen with, with Rivian here in the next two months, three months, four months. If all of a sudden the pre-orders come to a screeching halt, personally, I think we're screwed. So consider the people that buy the Rivian. My biggest concern is if I 
trade in my Tesla and I go with the Rivian, I'm gonna have a very expensive truck that I'm sitting on, which is awesome. It's an awesome truck and fun to drive and great. But two things, one, what happens if something happens with Rivian uh, after a year or two of ownership, you know, something, they go bankrupt, who knows what happens. If that company goes under for any reason, that truck sinks tremendously in value. That's number one, right? And number two is, again, if we don't see a lot of pre-orders after 3-1 forward, the truck, the, the value may not be there. So all this misconception of people saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this truck at this tremendous value. It's going to be, I'm going to have residual value from day one. There may not be consumers lining up for the vehicle. So again, you may be sitting on a truck in two years with a company that's struggling with a truck that not a lot of consumers are looking for that you spent 70,000 plus on. So what are you going to do with that truck after a couple of years if your life situation changes or whatever it is? You're taking a big gamble assuming that Rivian is going to succeed, number one, because if they fail that truck, it, the, the, it plummets, the value plummets. And, and also your consumer base or the folks that might be interested in that truck plummets as well. So you're in really deep trouble. So if, I'm telling you guys this right now, if we don't see with this new pricing structure of the increases, with this new configuration of a dual motor, et cetera, et cetera, if we don't see a demand for that vehicle, we're in trouble because unless Rivian suddenly can come out with something that is much more affordable, much more sought after, a small SUV, a car, or something like that, that they can mass produce that's profitable, we're, we might be in trouble because this company, I just, how are they going to succeed for the next two, three, five years on a truck? that has little demand. And again, I wanna go re revisit this one more time. This is really important, you guys. Remember, there was a strong demand for a truck because they're giving you the Swiss Army knife at what was perceived as a great value. The moment that that price went up 15, 20% to where it needs to be in order for Rivian to be profitable, the demand stopped. It stopped cold in its tracks. If you guys ignore that fact, and I don't think enough people are talking about this, everybody is sunshine and rainbows. Uh, thank you, RJ. God bless you for what you did on, on, on honoring our price, which is fantastic. But now talk to us about the sustainability of Rivian. How is Rivian going? This is what I wanna know as a pre-order customer. How is Rivian going to succeed selling trucks at a loss for the next two years to pre-order customers, to appease the pre-order customers. And then talk to, talk to us, share the numbers about how many more pre-orders are coming in after 3-1. Because if those pre-orders stopped, we need to know that. Because I don't want to be sitting on a truck that nobody wants. I don't want to be sitting on a truck that maybe there's a few pre-orders trickling in, which means when it comes time for me to sell that vehicle, there's little demand for it. So. Rivian stories, you guys need to spend a little bit more time talking about this. Get real. Forget about the emotion of, you know, daydreaming about this truck for the past three years. Let's get down to the, the brass tacks and reality of where we stand today. Sh the question is, should consumers move forward with the pre-orders? Should they trust that there will be a Rivian that exists in three or four years? Should they trust that there will be a consumer demand for a truck. I don't care at any price point. Will there be consumers out there that trust the name Rivian and trust that truck and trust that if they buy that truck that they can drive it for the next three, four, five years? I think that is the point that is not being discussed enough. So anyway, if you guys agree with me, disagree with me, put your thoughts below. Let's have a conversation and I'll talk to you soon.